for the section of the 8 freeway that passes the, uh, the Daniel K. Inouye International Airport. Because as I mentioned, the traffic gets really bad, well, especially coming from the west side of the island. But uh, we're actually going in the western western direction. <coughs> towards the west, but we're going to go up in a, uh, a central part of Oahu in a moment. And, um, yes, yeah, so that's the main reason why we got the H201 through it. And then this highway here to your right-hand side, this valley here, is the H3 freeway. So that's three interstate highways. And um, this highway connects Pearl Harbor with the Marine Corps base of Hawaii. You see, back in 1941, no highways existed here on Oahu. Because of that, um, when the attack occurred on December 7th, 1941, the guys that were at the... Um, as I mentioned earlier, the Marine Corps base of Hawaii actually got attacked first before Pearl Harbor did. And, um, the, and the servicemen over there were trying to get over to Pearl Harbor as quickly as they could, but because no highways existed, they had to go around the island. And that took over an hour. Thanks to the H3 freeway, it only takes a mere 25 minutes to get between those two military bases. So again, that's just the most efficient way possible. moment you're going to see the Aloha Stadium on your left hand side <clears throat> and that stadium was built back in 1975 and it cost 37 million dollars now when it first opened it was reconfigurable into three different shapes an oval configuration to accommodate uh, gridiron football games a uh, diamond to accommodate baseball games and soccer games and lastly a triangle to accommodate concerts but since 2007, it has been locked permanently in the oval configuration because it was getting expensive and very costly and very impractical to keep moving around, moving the section, the, the movable sections. Because when they built that stadium back in 75, they used a certain type of steel. It's called weathering steel. <clears throat> and uh, the intent of that steel was for it to rust only up to a certain point. And that rust was supposed to form a protective coating. But what was not taken into consideration when they built that stadium is the fact that the Hawaiian Islands is surrounded by salt water. Yeah, there you go. So therefore, it never, so as a result, it never stopped rusting. In fact, so much so that in um, December of 2020, the Aloha Stadium Authority announced that they were closing the stadium permanently because the rust is becoming a safety issue. And it is set for demolition in the fall of 2023, so sometime next year. May she rust in peace. Yep, there I go again. <laughs> yeah, there, um, there are current plans to build a replacement stadium, but unlike um, the current stadium which holds 50,000, the new stadium is only um, um, slated to um, only going to have a seating capacity of 35,000 instead of 50. For those of you guys who are NFL fans, you may recall that for many years, the Aloha Stadium was actually the, the venue for the NFL's Pro Bowl, in fact, from 1980 to 2016. It was also the home for the University of Hawaii Rainbow Warrior football team from 1975 to 2020. Now, while the stadium itself is not being used anymore, the surrounding parking lot still is. In fact, every Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday, from about 8 a.m. to 3 p.m., um, in the surrounding parking lot is an event that's, um, that's called the Aloha Stadium Swap Meet or Flea Market. Yeah, that's a cool, another cool place you guys can check out. You want to um, see a whole lot of cool souvenirs and um, snacks that you only see here in Hawaii. Now this neighborhood that's to your left hand, or your right hand side, excuse me, is Pearl Harbor. And then out there to your left is um, Pearl Harbor. Uh, on your left is Pearl Harbor, that neighborhood to your right is called Aiea. And it's named after, Aiea is named after a type of um, tree, the uh, tomato plant that used to be found in that neighborhood. And it is the only U.S. city whose name consists entirely of vowels, A-I-E-A. -E -A. Okay, so out there to your left-hand side is a better view of Pearl Harbor. If you guys haven't been there yet, man, you guys gotta check that place out. And then also, and then also is uh, Ford Island. It's named after Dr. Seth Porter Ford, who was uh, a physician who lived on that island during the 1850s and 1860s. Uh, since 1917, 
Ford Island has been used as an um, as a naval um, as a military base. Actually, at one point, it was um, occupied by both the U.S. Army as well as the U.S. Navy. But since 1939, once they moved the Army Air Corps 6th Aero Squadron over to then newly developed Hickam Field, now known today as Hickam Air Force Base, uh, since 1939, Ford Island has been used exclusively by the U.S. Um, Navy. And at one point, the commanding officer of Fort uh, Pearl Harbor actually lived at the very beginning part of uh, Fort Island. There's a, place, there's a place called Knob Hill that has 19 tropic bungalows built between 1923 and 1936. On your right-hand side is Pearl City. Uh, and according to WalletHub.com, this city here to your right-hand side is not only the happy city here in Hawaii, it's also the 14th happiest city in the United States. I don't know where they're getting their information from because every time I drive through that neighborhood, people cut me off there all the time. <laughs> yeah, they're, yeah. I'm like, if they're happy, they're not the ones on the road. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. One million people, five million cars. Got it. <laughs> or it just seems like there's five million cars on the road, right? Okay, so we're about to go on the fourth of the four interstate highways called the H2 Freeway, which will take us all the way to um, through um, all the way up to Wahiwa and to our next stop at the Dole Plantation. Which is only about 10, uh, about 12 miles, or about um, or about, about 20 or um, about 23, 24 kilometers or so. So we're not too far away from it. 